So our next speaker will be Xiao Cheng, who will tell us about um, scattering transform and its use in cosmology. Uh, you have 12 minutes, Xiao. Uh, hi. Uh, good morning. I'm Xiao Cheng from uh, Johns Hopkins University. And today I'm going to talk with you uh, something about uh, CNN without, yeah, I can see. Um, without the need to train. And this work uh, done with uh, Professor Paris Pina, uh, Yuan Shen Ding, and Joan Bruna. So according to the great physicist uh, Gibbs, doing theoretical science is about uh, finding a viewpoint uh, where the uh, complex world around us looks simple. So uh, nowadays we have a lot of data, and many of them in the form of a field. So these are high dimensional data and it's complex. So to extract information from it is really about to make use of the internal structures uh, in these kind of data set and find a vocabulary or re representation uh, which can uh, characterize and uh, simplify uh, the, and compress the data. So once we got the vocabulary, of course, we can uh, have a very wide application. It can be used for data exploration or classification or uh, uh, inference. So then the first vocabulary coming to mind to characterize a field might be the power spectrum. Um, but as we all know, uh, the uh, power spectrum only extracts the Gaussian information and fail to distinguish these two uh, fields. So then there might be a, a natural extension called high order statistics. But uh, when, although it works perfectly well in the uh, weekly non-Gaussian regime, uh, when we go to highly non-Gaussian regime, actually it has a lot of limitations. Basically, you have too many numbers of coefficients and also uh, the, the information actually escaping from, from the sequence. So there's a, a wonderful paper discussing, uh, talking about the, the in, in, incompleteness of high order statistics in, in cosmology. Right, so in recent years, we witnessed the, uh, a brand new approach with a convolutional neural net approach to extract information from a field. So it, it seems it's very powerful and successful, but on the other hand, it has a problem of uh, transparency and uh, interpretability. And also, it seems that these kind of models, they're using a different type of mathematics uh, than the high order statistics. So then, it's, uh, very interesting to ask whether we can combine the advantages of these two approaches and uh, uh, design a statistic that share the, uh, the advantages of them. So that's exactly what's driven mathematicians uh, to develop the scattering transform. So it's basically a statistical tool borrowing ideas and some mathematics from convolutional neural net, but itself is just a statistic and, and you don't need to train anything. And the scattering transform also, I think, provide a wonderful opportunity uh, for us to decipher the inner working of convolutional neural net, kind, kind of it's just a toy model of convolutional neural net. Right, so to show it uh, uh, demonstrates power, first I'm showing some results from image synthesis here. Um, the idea is that with an input field, Okay, it's the upper part. Uh, from the input field, we calculate some uh, particular statistics, and then uh, we randomly generate new images uh, with the same summary statistics as the input field. And then we compare the texture of the generated image and the input image. So this is a way to show you uh, what a particular statistic see from a field. What would a field look like? in the eye of a, a particular statistic. So if we play this trick with the power spectrum, we get some Gaussian texture that's expected. If we add the bias spectrum, uh, the result improved a lot, but still is far from the uh, uh, input uh, texture. So by the way, I think this is, uh, for many of you, this might be the first time I see a visualization of a bias spectrum. So what about the scattering transform? Um, as you can see, uh, uh, cannot see. <laughs> so here is the texture generated uh, uh, from the uh, scattering coefficient. You can see 
uh, the textures are very similar to the input field. And in, uh, in order to do this, you just need about 50 translation invariant coefficients. So I think this strongly suggests that the scattering transform or scattering coefficients uh, is highly efficient to characterize uh, properties of uh, physical, physical fields. And we did this experiment uh, to very different physical fields. Here I'm showing five different uh, physical fields. And we constantly find very impressive uh, synthesis result. So the upper panels are, are input fields and the lower panels are, are examples of the randomly generated new uh, images. So I've been showing you the power of the scattering uh, transform. Now let me go into some uh, details of the uh, uh, formalism of the scattering transform. So basically I want to show you that by we can obtain the scattering transform by just slightly modifying the uh, power spectrum structure. So in some sense, it is another natural extension uh, of the power spectrum. The so first thing interesting we realize is that the power spectrum in the real space can be written as a one layer convolutional network. Uh, as here, you have the convolution kernel and also nonlinearity, which is square and uh, you have the uh, global pooling. So the scattering transform is basically uh, in its first layer doing something very similar, but it used wavelet instead of Fourier mode as the kernel, and also it used modulus instead of modulus square as the uh, uh, nonlinearity. So the point to, to make these two modifications is that by uh, doing that, you, you can go to the Always. You just have to be really calm with it. Okay. Yeah, so by having these modifications, you can easily go to the next layer, uh, pick another scale, and apply another time of the scattering uh, 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 operation. So then uh, it's uh, we are able to uh, explore the interaction between different scales. So finally, to construct translation invariant coefficient, we have a set of, uh, we just take the uh, global pooling of these layers, and we got uh, coefficients as a function of scales and scale combinations. So uh, if we uh, ex explicitly uh, draw all the uh, scale combinations, you can see that the structure of the scattering transform is similar to a convolutional neural net. Um, the difference is that uh, you don't need to learn the kernel. Now the kernels are presets. There are families of wavelets which have different scales and orientations. Right, so I will uh, briefly talk about some uh, interesting interpretations. Uh, we found that basically the first order scattering is similar to power spectrum, and the second order can be interpreted as something like the power spectrum of local power spectrum. Uh, but the, the, the difference is that now you have all the first order nonlinearity, which make it uh, much more stable. And also I found some interesting visual interpretations of these coefficients. For example, the second order uh, can be interpreted as um, the, the spatial sparsity of features, as you can see, and, and uh, the, when, when this large then uh, the, the features are spa sparsely distributed in the field. And that's really the essence of non-Gaussianity, right? And if we take the ratio between second order coefficients with the configuration of parallel uh, wavelets versus uh, perpendicular wavelets, then uh, it corresponds to some texture like the bubble-like textures versus filamentary uh, textures. I think these are very interesting uh, visualizations, interpretation of how these convolution layers are working. Right, so finally I'll talk about uh, some uh, uh, application in weak lensing cosmology. Uh, as you all know, so these are the uh, uh, two lensing mass maps from simulations. They have the same power spectrum again, but different uh, extent of non-Gaussianity. So, uh, that's why on this uh, parameter constraint plane, we have this degeneracy from the power spectrum. So if you wonder what is the performance of the scattering transform, well, um, 
it actually significantly improve the constraint um, if we decompose the contribution from the first order and the second order, you also see that, that, that that's consistent with the interpretation of the coefficients. And by the way, if you compare that with the performance by spectrum, uh, it's actually uh, much worse than the scattering. So this is related to the, what, what Julian Kaon said. Right, so in the, that's in the noisy, ca uh, noise list case. Uh, in the noisy case, we kind of find similar results. The x-axis is the decreasing noise, the y-axis constraining power here. And uh, uh, here I'm showing the performance like a uh, convolution neural net and other non-Gaussian statistic. So if we wonder what about the performance of scattering, um, it's almost the same as the convolution neural net at all noise levels. So I think this strongly suggests that the scattering might already exhausted available information in the lensing uh, uh, context. And in order to achieve this performance, you really just need to add about 40 coefficients, 40 statistics in the uh, summary statistics set instead of training millions or billions of uh, parameters. And also I want to emphasize that uh, there's a practical advantage of the scattering coefficient, which is this compact and robust. That's really important for practical application. So let me summarize. Um, I talked about different ways to characterize the field and uh, to extract information from it. And there is the uh, power spectrum and traditional statistical approach, and there's a convolutional neural net approach. Um, and I talked about a new tool which is called scattering transform lies in between of these two approaches. So on the one hand, it can be seen as a high order statistic with lower order nonlinearity and a wavelet binning. That's why it, it becomes robust and efficient. And on the other hand, it can be seen as a, a toy model of convolutional neural net without the need to train. So I showed a application uh, in weak lensing cosmology where it have a CN level performance. So if you wonder why it can have a CN level performance, I think this related to the complexity of uh, physical fields we have in our research, uh, which usually have a complexity in between of the simple Gaussian regime and the very complex uh, biological world. So that's why I would argue that for these physical fields, um, the scattering transform is very suitable and is the, the correct way to go. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> very nice talk. We have time for one question from the audience. Caroline? Thanks for the talk. So the wavelets are kind of your kernel. Could you also use... Oh, I'm sorry. Caroline Henneke. Hi. <laughs> Um, so the wavelets are basically your kernel. Could you also use another kernel? And maybe related to that, so if you look at the CNN and your scattering transform performance, so basically what the CNN does is kind of using wavelets? Oh yeah, that's a good question. Actually, uh, wavelets, people found wavelets in the first layer of CNN, but not the uh, deeper layer. And also people found in a human visual system, a mammal vision system, that they're also wavelets. So wavelet are some very efficient uh, kernels, actually. But you could use something else for the scattering transform. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. But uh, um, so first, there are some some efficient and 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 uh, good properties of wavelet. Of course, you can use others, but I think uh, we, we've tried several, but but it, the performance are, are basically not as good as wavelet. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. We'll have just a quick question from the, from the Slack. Uh, Jenny Wagner asks, um, of those 37 coefficients that you said you needed, do you need all of them to reach this accuracy? Or how, how fast does your accuracy decrease if you like, get rid of some of those parameters? I see, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so basically, those coefficients are also a function of scales. And as we know, right, for these non-Gaussian uh, structures, the, the, the information will mostly be in small scales because you have more modes. So like excluding the large scale coefficients will not change the result very much. Okay, very interesting.
Thank you, Sian Hogan.